Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. Today is Monday, May the 30th, 2022, and I am here to share my stitching with you. If you're new, welcome. Um, it's always nice to have new people stop by for a visit, and if you're a returning viewer or a subscriber, um, thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate your support, and it's always fun to see you again too and have a visit. So, um, the month of May is um, a month in the stitching community where we celebrate uh, what we like to call mania. It was started back in 2015 by a couple of the original floss tubers who I think wanted uh, a way to celebrate starting a bunch of new projects. But over the years it has evolved and uh, Stitch Mania can be anything that you want it to be. Um, so for me, that was monogamania. monogamania. So I just worked on one project for the month. Um, but I want to back up a little bit because besides May being uh, the month we celebrate Stitch Mania, it was also the month that we celebrated um, our Whippet puppy, uh, Ollie, his one year birthday. So he turned one. Um, so yes, he's very spoiled, but um, he's the sweetest, kindest little dog we've ever owned and he brings us so much joy. Um, it's hard not to spoil them. So if you'll indulge me for a minute, I'm gonna insert a quick little uh, one minute video, kind of a little, a, tra a little trailer I made in iMovie just cause I was playing around on his birthday and um, it shows some of his, his photos from when he was tiny and um, kind of where he is at now. And then a, a, a few pictures of him with all of his birthday goodies. So I'm gonna insert that um, here now, thanks. <laughs> before. Um, I'm really enjoying learning a little bit more about editing and stuff. So um, so yeah, that, that was a, a fun way for me to, to get a little bit more experience and uh, a little uh, memory we have now from when he turned one. And it was really cute because my husband saw it and he really liked it and he wanted me to email it to him so he could take it to work and show <laughs> some of his co-workers um, our little puppy that we all love so much. So, so thanks for indulging me in that. So back to Stitch Mania. So um, let me just quickly go over my stats from the month. Because it was monogamania for me, I did not stitch on a tremendous number of projects. But if you watched the last video, I did mention I might mix it up on the weekends and just stitch something else to break it up. Um, but so basically I worked on three whips the entire month. I did have a new start and a finish, but they're within that series that I've been working on. So I don't, I never know whether to count them or not. So, and I didn't have any full finishes that I did this month. So, so let's get started with what I did work on. So, um, I'm going to leave my monogamania project till the last, cause it's maybe got the most progress for you to see. But the other project that has been my focus project the past few, um, couple of months is the Snowflower Diaries um, Joyful World series. And I'm almost completed it. So if you remember, uh, if you watched my last video, I had completed um, two more months, I think August and October. I'd done September in the past. Um, and I had just started November and I had just had the outline of the box um, completed. So I did finish November. Um, earlier this month and so here is the month of November so it's with the peacock it's really pretty I did change up the colors a little bit um, the original was stitched in gentle arts threads and it looks really nice um, but I don't have all of those threads so 
I use a DMC conversion, but I, even from there, I kind of branched off and picked some other colors that I really liked. So, so that is November. So I have one month left and that is the month of, uh, December. Yeah. And that'll be Ollie moaning beside me. Um, and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done much. I just, um, uh, I went to visit a friend and thought this is a good project to work on when we visited, but we, we talked more than we stitch so I just have this little pardon the dangling thread I just have the first corner done on the on the border so so I'm hoping to get that finished in the next week or two so that that series will be complete but I'll talk about that a little bit more when I get to plans uh, so that was one whip that I worked on the second whip that I worked on was a weekend project um, and I did just spin the wheel and it picked this project, but I was actually really happy because um, it's the uh, pattern by Awesome Pattern Studios, just called Whip It. I'll put a picture of what it'll look like when it's done here. And and yeah, it's a Whip It. And it was kind of fun because it was the weekend right around um, Ollie's birthday. So I thought, what an appropriate uh, piece to stitch on. So here's where I'm at with this. I will put a picture of where I was before here. Um, I didn't get a tremendous amount done, but I did get some. I uh, I realized when I was stitching that there was an area where I'd kind of messed up. I mean, I'm not, I have to be honest, I'm not loving this linen, but I have decided I'm gonna commit to stitching the whole piece because I just wanna see how my color conversion's gonna look on this fabric. Um, and decide whether I like it or if I'm going to redo it on different fabric or with a different colorway. Um, I don't hate what I have here, but I'm just, I'm just uncertain about it. But the problem with this linen, this is a, I call it a mystery linen. I know it's called time. It's the first piece of hand dyed linen I ever bought. The first time I ever went to a cross stitch store, um, back in maybe 2018. And um, I don't know if it's a one of those old weeks ones, like it's really, really flimsy. Um, so usually I don't have a lot of trouble with tension, but I'm finding even with a hoop, um, trying to keep my tension even on this really loose weave of this linen. So so yeah, the I'm still undecided, but I'm gonna push on. And um, as you can see, this um, hedgehog here is by Awesome Pattern Studio, and it's the same style. And I did a color conversion on that because it had a lot of pinks and purples and I like blues and greens better. And I know the whole time I stitched it, I'm like going, do I like this or don't I like this? And I think it's hard to tell because the colors are all scattered around. So sometimes you'll stitch like say this little bit of light gray here and you'll go, I don't know, that looks weird. But when you're done, there's more of the light gray over here. You can see there's some of the light gray up here. So once you actually complete the whole thing, the colors are balanced more you know, throughout the whole whole piece. And I think, I think it makes more sense then. But when you're just looking at little blocks of it like this, it's kind of odd, but, um, so I'm gonna persevere. Um, I was, again, um, happy to pull it out and stitch on it again. And I think I just need to, um, yeah, just keep pushing on. And I think it'll probably all come together at the end. I'm just a very indecisive person and really good at second guessing things. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes anyway. So that was my second um, whip that I worked on. And so then the third and last whip that I worked on um, was a white horse. I'll put a picture here of what it will look like when it's finished. Um, it's by an Etsy designer um, called Ava's Designs. And there's a link um, in the description box down below if you want to go and check um, this pattern out or any of her other patterns. So. I'm stitching this um, on an 18 count white Ada and um, it's really coming together. So I'm gonna put a picture when I started at the beginning of the month, what it looked like, how much I had done. And so here is how far I got. So I'm really happy with my progress on that. I am halfway across the top row of pages. I think there's four pages 
across. Um, so I've got two pages completed. Um, this little black thing down here is the tip of the horse's ear. So that's kind of exciting. So yeah, so that's been really fun. I've really enjoyed stitching on it. I know it's a lot of gray and white and you might think that it gets boring, but it really doesn't. Um, and it's just a nice balance of solid color stitching and a little bit of confetti here and there. And um, it seems to stitch up fairly quickly. So um, yeah, I was really having fun and I just love watching it come together. And it's one of those you know patterns where you're stitching a small ear and you go, I have no idea what I'm stitching. But once you get more in or you stand back and you look at it and you go, oh, that's the tip of the ear or oh, that's the crease in the neck. Oh, that's a little bit of mane kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, it's really fun that way too, watching the picture come to life. So yeah, so those are um, the three whips that I worked on this month. I did forget to mention, um, other than that this is a bit of a mystery linen called Time, uh, it is a 28 count linen as well. And um, my uh, Joyful World cell, this is a 28 count linen, um, just the one you get from Michaels. Um, and yeah, technically this was my finish and this was my start. But as I say, they're within that series and right now I'm kind of counting that series as one whip, so. Um, so that then brings me to um, my future start. Uh, so I've kitted up a future start that I hope to do. Oops, sorry, dropping things. Um, put in, made myself a new bag in the midst of all my sewing. I've been doing this last yeah. month. This was a pattern that I got through a um, D-Stash site. And um, the pattern is this adorable little chickadee on this branch of pussy willows. So I, I, I'm guessing it's called Fuji. Um, so I just fell in love with them when I saw them and I had to have the pattern so I purchased the pattern and um, I've pulled my threads together most of the threads are um, DMC's so I made myself a little floss organizer to uh, put all my DMC's in there are a few specialty fibers which again I'm kind of excited to use because I haven't used a lot of specialty fibers so um, I'm still waiting for one more to come it'll hopefully be here in the next week or two not that I'm going to be starting this right away again this is just a start for some time in the future but um so yeah so it uses this um black sparkly krynik and then um this whisper white so this is in the pussy willows and there's a whisper gray that's coming that is also in the pussy willows so that's going to be kind of fun i've never worked with whisper i know it's challenging but i'm excited to try and then um there's actually even a little bit of um silk in there so I've never stitched with, <coughs> excuse me I've never stitched with silk before so that's gonna be fun too so and then I was a little bit undecided about what linen I wanted to use but in the end I just decided to go with the called for linen which is just a 32 count antique white uh, I was looking at some hand dyed linens um, one of them particularly uh, I believe it's the one that Leo and Roxy is calling pistachio I bought it when I was at Stitch North and I don't think it had an official name at that time but and the the when I put all the flosses on it looked great but with this antique white I think kind of like in this photo like this bird is going to be the centerpiece and it feels a little bit like art gallery-ish type to me I don't know if that's silly but uh, whereas on the um, pistachio the fabric was beautiful and I just wondered if he'd be a little less dramatic on that so I thought I'm just gonna stick because this is what I fell in love with is this right here so I'm just gonna stick with that antique white linen so that is my future start which I'm looking forward to so then I'm going to talk a little bit about plans so May is almost over so I'm gonna go back pardon me I'm gonna go back to my regular routine and um, have uh, my focus project one, which is my oldest whip. So right now that's still the snowflower 
um, Diaries Joyful World sell, but I just have one more to do. So I anticipate I'll have that done the first week of June, um, but don't hold me to that. Life happens. Um, so if I do, then I'm going to replace that with my next oldest whip, which um, actually happens to be um, another full coverage horse, <laughs> is Behind the Bit. And so this one um, then will stay as a focus project until it's done, which is kind of exciting to me because I started this on December 31st, 2018. So um, I'm excited to do, you know, put in some significant time on it and get some significant progress. But I will show you where it is currently at this time. So it's right there. So yeah. So that will become my new focus project number one once I complete the Snowflower Diaries. And then I have a second focus project that um, the two focus projects I work on during the week, two to three days um, for each of them. And then on the weekends I spin my wheel and um, just work on a random project for the weekend. So my other focus project, focus project number two, which I will just focus on for the month of June and then in July I'll pick a new second focus project. But it is this Galloping Horses, which is uh, the designer's The City Stitcher. And I found this in a magazine at um, on a freebie table. It's a quite an old magazine, I think. Here's the cover. Country Stitch. July, August, 1990. And yeah, so it's a Galloping Horses sampler and uh, it's got some specialty stitches. So I'm, I'm excited to try the specialty stitches and see how that goes. I'm kind of excited to work on a monochromatic piece because I've never done that. So, you know, unfortunately the, the monochromatic color is um, white, but uh, that's okay. And uh, yeah, I just really, <laughs> I just like those horses. They just look very happy. So I had, I did start this um, last year when I did stitch all the horses in July and uh, that's all I have is the A and I started the B and that top band is done with satin stitches. So. so yeah, and this is just a piece of 28 count Monaco that I dyed a denim blue because I wanted it to look similar to the one in the photo. So so yeah, so I'm looking forward to get back to that and do some stitching because I, I think I've only stitched on it a couple of times since last year. So that'll be good. And yeah, and then on the weekends I will spin my wheel and work on whatever comes up so so yeah it's been fun working on one project all month um you know at some points of the month I was like going oh I should just you know keep stitching on this until I finish it but I did find that my interest sort of started to wane a little bit so I do think currently what I'm doing seems to work fairly well for me so I'm looking forward to getting back to that sort of regular routine so so that is it for plans now I was thinking since um I didn't have a whole lot of stitching to show you. It might be fun to um, copy what my friend Amanda over at Lucky Chance um, Stitcher, uh, she has a floss tube, I'll link it down below. Hi Amanda. Um, recently she did a couple of videos uh, doing what she called a stash dive and was showing us some of her kits that she's collected over the years. And I really enjoyed seeing that because I, I have an affinity for kits as well. So my collection isn't quite as impressive as hers but i thought maybe it would be fun to show you what i do have and if you've watched my videos for a while you may have seen some of these in the past but i i, I don't know it's always fun to see what's out there and um, be inspired and um enabled however you want to we want to look at it so so let's um let's do that and some of these are you know like traditional kits and some are a little bit different but they're just projects that i um have purchased as a kit so to speak so the first one I just wanted to show you I love these buttons and beads I haven't done one for a while but um this is the summer one uh that I had got again my thought I'm, I'm really keen about seasonal things and uh, in my mind it would be like it'd be nice to have you know one for summer one for fall one for winter um one for spring type of thing so 
Whether I'll do that, I don't know, but I really like this one that to me signifies summer. Um, my brother and sister-in-law have this beautiful um, cottage up, um, uh, kind of northern Ontario, not, not far, far north, maybe about three hours north of here, I think. Um, and it's just beautiful and it's on a lake and they have a dock and we've been there a few times over the years and it's always incredibly relaxing and just beautiful. And this sort of reminds me of that. So, so yeah, so looking forward to stitching that someday. Um, so this is one of my dimensions kits that I've collected. So this is one of the petites. Um, so I discovered I have a few of these where I was drawn to them and I realized they're all the artwork by the same artist. So it's Fred Swan is um, the artist. I think there's only one more dimensions kit with his art that I haven't found yet, but, um, but yeah, so this one is called quiet night. And I just thought that was just a very comforting homey, um, picture and can't wait to work on that someday. Um, this one I, I showed recently because this was on the freebie table at um, Stitch North, but this is a Bucilla kit. It's the entire kit. Everything is here. And it's kind of like um, this bell pull type thing that um, I had thought my mother-in-law might really enjoy that. So I'm hoping maybe that I might stitch that and gift it to her. Now this one is also Dimensions Kit, and I do apologize, I didn't do any research on this. I got this as well from a D-Stash, Canadian D-Stash um, site. It's called Cats Are Perfect, and um, I just thought it was really sweet. I, I, you know, I really like the, the cats that are there, and there's um, a little mouse kind of throughout the, throughout the picture as well. Um, the colors seem a little bit dated to me, but I might switch out the pinky corals um, for something something different. I'm not sure, but um, but yeah, I just saw it and thought I've never seen that before. I don't know if I'll ever see it again, and I thought I might regret it if I didn't pick it up. So, and again, full kit. And this one you've seen before. This was a gift. Hi, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so getting back to my kit parade. So um, this one you've seen uh, not too long ago. This was a gift from my floss tube friend, um, Holly. She um, kindly gifted this to me because she wasn't sure if she was going to stitch it. Um, it's a DMC kit uh, featuring artwork um, that's in the National Gallery. So yeah, so that one's fun. And you saw this one recently. But I'll share it again. My Bothy threads that I purchased when I was at Stitch North from Gita's. Love that docky. So adorable. And then my other two Fred Swans. So this is one that I recently purchased that I just love. I am debating. I'm really trying not to do a lot of new starts. I really want to get some of the projects I have in progress completed. But I am thinking about having this as a birthday start because it's summer, my birthday's in the summer, and it's so pretty. I just love the colors, and uh, but we'll see. It's, you know, it's a big full coverage piece, so I may not. Yet to be decided. And then my last one is a Fred Swan, which I had got years ago, but haven't started. This is Winter's Hush, which is so pretty. I love, there's a couple little dogs here. There's a little cat on the railing there. So, so pretty. So yeah, so that's, that's my uh, kit stash that I have, all my unstarted kits. Obviously I have a few kits that I'm currently working on, but, but yeah, if you have any questions about any of those, feel free to ask. Um, so then, let me just double check my notes here. Um, quick little shop update, and that's what fell on the floor. So forgive me as I disappear for a minute. I um, I haven't 
put a tremendous amount of new stuff up in my shop. Um, recently, I I had a customer uh, who had custom ordered something, share it on Facebook, and that led to a lot of inquiries and several more custom orders, which was so amazing and so wonderful. Um, so thank you, Allison, for that. And um, so I have been busy for the last few weeks working on a bunch of um, fairly large custom orders. Uh, I have popped the odd little um, vinyl front bag in there, but I haven't had a lot of time to work on um, my little quilted bags and stuff that I like to make. But I do have a couple here that I made um, in the past that I would thought I would share with you. Um, they are made with the... Uh, sorry. That's Ollie trying to make a bed on the carpet to lay in front of the door. Pardon me just for a minute. We're lying down now. So yeah, so this is the Teresa Kogut fabric. Um, so this is one of the larger quilted bags. And then I made a little mini to match it. So I was lucky enough to score a fat quarter of these fabrics. So um, I'm hoping to make several um, of the large bags and the minis. Um, and uh, I, I'm thinking, I'm planning that I might take these to my retreat in September because I'm going to be selling some stuff there um, to offer them for sale. Um, but but yeah, so that um, that's something again I haven't made recently, but made a while ago and I think they're really cute and uh, I hope to make some more and I may depending on how many I can get out of the fabric that I have I might put some in the shop and then set some aside to take with me to the retreat in the fall so we'll see how that works out um so yeah I think the only other thing to share with you um is my craft from the past and last month I showed you my slippers that a friend had knitted me. Um, I had knitted myself a pair years ago. So it is a craft I have done in the past. I just didn't do this particular one myself, but um, I'm gonna put a picture in of what they look like when I got them because um, these are what you call felted slippers. So when you knit them, you knit them really big and then essentially you wash them to shrink them and it allows the fibers to kind of rub together and sort of become like felt um, to make them the finished size. So I, I, I promised you I would felt them and show you this month what they look like once they're felted. So, so again, here's what they look like before, how big they were. And here is what they look like now. So they're <laughs> just for comparison's sake. That's what they look like now. And they're super comfy and cozy. Um, they're a little bit fuzzy. I've been wearing them, so there might be a little bit of dog hair on there. Um, but they're super comfy and cozy. Um, they've got the double uh, layer on the sole, which makes them nice and cushy. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying having them to wear. So yeah, felted slippers. And yeah, you can, obviously you can felt anything. I think a lot of people make bags, you know, like tote bags and stuff and felt those and um so yeah it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to do so so I think that's everything I have to share with you this month um so yeah I will basically finish this out this month I'll probably work um I think I'm gonna leave White Horse it's at a good finishing point and I'll probably just work on my Snowflower Diaries uh today and tomorrow and then switch to my um my regular routine on the 1st of June so um, until next time, take care. Bye, everybody.